All right, the camera's rolling, so don't say anything you're gonna regret. Is it rolling or no? The camera is. Hey, grab that mic, I'm gonna do a sound check. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Got check, 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 check. Robin Jackson on the one, check, and check, 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 check. While drinking water this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're at Liberty Cap, on top of the Liberty Cap Trail, in front of the Liberty Cap Formation in the Colorado National Monument. Nice. What's up guys, I'm podcasting to you today from probably one of the most remote podcast locations in history. You're gonna wanna tune in to the video on this one. I got a very, very special guest. I am not in the Golden State at the moment. No, I am in the state of mountains. It has a weird ass state motto. We looked it up the other day. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but uh, I'm in Colorado with the one, the only, Logan Jackson! How's it going everybody? Man, it's good to be here. Alright, that was a good warm up. We should have rolled with that one. Oh, is that recording? No. Nice, nice, I just, nice, nice, nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, yeah. Shake, the, shake it off a little bit. Check, one, two. What is up, everybody? I am coming to you today from probably one of the most remote podcasting locations on the planet. I am no longer in the Golden State. I'm not on the West Coast anymore. I'm actually in mountain time. I'm a little further east. I'm in the state of mountains. That's not the state motto, but um, we looked up the state motto, and I can't remember what it was. It's a very forgettable state motto, but sitting to my immediate left, a gray buddy, a high school friend, a dude that I can call up whenever I need anything, and he's going to help me out as much as possible. I hadn't seen this dude in probably three years, except for last year one time when I was actually driving out to the West Coast. But it's my long-lost buddy, great friend, Logan Jackson. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me, Nick. Dude, no problem. No, thank you for having me. So we are in Colorado, right? Grand Junction, Colorado. We are on top of, what did you call this? Liberty? Liberty Cap. Liberty Cap. Yeah. So my boy Logan's been living out here for almost a year now. Almost a year. You moved out here almost the same time I moved out to uh, California. Right. So um, been out here long enough to get into some trouble, find some mountains to climb. He's climbing 14ers. Uh, we got a 14er we're planning on doing this week, this weekend. Um, so I'm excited about that. But Logan, how has living in Grand Junction treated you? Uh, it's been great, man. I, uh, I really enjoy it out here. I've been uh, in a great mood the entire time I've lived out here. That's pretty rare i think uh, i would say that's very rare for the majority of the population out uh, yeah there. this place just offers so much uh, that i personally enjoy doing like uh, hiking um boating a river camping um there's so much just right outside of town if you're looking at the video we are literally above town looking down at it right now we drove 15 minutes to get here and it you know feels like we're in the middle of nowhere up here it's uh yeah not a soul there wasn't a soul uh, in the parking lot when we left the uh the trailhead now we're up here and it's, it's about as remote as you can get um i was going to ask you something but it slipped my mind no uh, worries but yeah living here is great i enjoy it good good yeah so um what prompted you to move out here exactly just kind of get into that whole story there yeah sure so uh um, oh, I know what I was going to say, actually, okay, part, just pardon the interruption, but uh, yeah, so the podcast listeners out there, be sure to turn tune into the website, uh, nickletooth.com slash Logan, or the YouTube channel to see the video, uh, you can see the view behind us, it's a pretty unique little setup, I uh, got the camera behind us, so it's kind of just like a fly on the wall, I think you'll really enjoy the view, uh, and enjoy the video too, so the, the audio ought to be, you know, pretty decent. Uh, but yeah, check that out. Anyway, Logan, back to the story. What prompted you to move out to Grand Junction of all places? I've never heard of this place before, really. Yeah, uh, me neither, actually. Um, so last year, uh, I was uh, waiting tables and uh, didn't want to be waiting tables anymore. And so I've been saving up a bit of money for a while. Where Where were you waiting tables uh, at? Victoria, Texas, down south Texas. And you're an uh, alumni of Texas, Texas A&M. Texas A&M, class of 13, that's right. So no, hey, we both are, we both are alumni of A&M, just different branches. Is that right? Oh, yeah, that is right. Yeah, Texture County right, right here. Yeah, not as prestigious, but you know. okay. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I had saved up a lot of money for a while and wanted to take a big road trip uh, because I knew that 
the goal was to get a, a more serious job than waiting tables. Uh, and I knew that if I quit that job, quit waiting tables, that I'd have a, about a month and a half or so of freedom that I might not get again for the rest of my life. So uh, me and a friend of mine from college went on a 10,000 mile, 35 day road trip across the Western United States, uh, camped out, saw a bunch of amazing stuff that I'd never you know, dreamed that I would get to see in my life growing up in Decap, Texas, um, especially. And uh, so that kind of um, opened my eyes to what's out here uh, in the Western United States. And we actually passed through Grand Junction, um, stayed for a night on our way over to Moab, Utah. Um, so that kind of put Grand Junction on the map for me. Um, long story short, after the road trip, I came home and um, I had a connection that worked at a mortgage company that um, was also affiliated with an appraisal um, company that has a branch in Houston and a branch in Grand Junction. And uh, they asked if I was interested in maybe becoming a real estate appraiser. And uh, I said, I'm not sure, you know, I don't really know what that is. And they said, well, you know, you could go live in Colorado. And I said, okay, when do I start? So, you got yourself a deal. Yeah, I was wondering about that because, um, yeah, Houston, I mean, you were right the road from Houston. So. Right, and that's kind of where what I was thinking when they initially came to me and said, you know, would you like to, we're trying to grow the company. And uh, and I knew they had an office in Houston, and I thought, well, that's great. You know, my family is in, you know, kind of that area of Texas. Um, and uh, But then they said, you know, well, you know, you can stay in Houston, or you can do the job in Houston, uh, but you'd have to wait a couple months because they were booked up with the trainees that they had. And they said, we've got an immediate opening in Grand Junction, Colorado. And so um, I flew out here, met up with the uh, the boss, the president of this branch of the company, and, you know, kind of looked around town for some apartments and stuff. And a week later, I drove up here in a U-Haul, and here we are. Yeah, heck yeah, that's awesome. That's Actually, that's one of the last time I saw you before I came back out here was I was in Denver meeting another mutual friend of ours uh, on my way to the West Coast. I just wanted to stop. Yeah. You know, I came, I don't want to go the scenic route because very much like you, I didn't know if I'd ever have another opportunity to kind of like have a good long road trip to see some things along the way uh, going from Northeast Texas all the way to Southern California. So right. I was like, I got a buddy up there. He was actually, I was actually helping him get ready for some stuff uh, training wise. And I was like, yeah, I'll go up there for him with him for a weekend or in a couple of days and uh you know we'll train we'll hang out get to catch up and then uh, lo and behold um i guess you saw something on social or Snapchat. yeah you you posted a, an instagram of garden the gods in call in denver uh -huh. area and uh, i think i you know shot you a message and and while i was in the airport waiting to get on a plane to houston to denver uh, out of houston you called me and and said yeah i'm in denver and we kind of made plans to meet up that night because i was going to be landing in denver and staying with some other people and uh you know, yeah, that night we met up and uh, hung out and then found out that you were going to be headed west through Grand Junction. Yeah, so. yeah, I had no clue. I knew I was going west, but I didn't, like I said, I'd never heard Grand Junction and you yeah. were going there. So then you left. I was still there for another day or two. Mm -hmm. And then I made my way out there and then uh, we, we hung out again, grabbed a burger here in Grand Junction. And then um, you did your thing and then I, I mosed it on uh, over to Salt Lake City. But yeah, yeah that was, uh, that was so... Um, uh, it was such was a random occurrence, very, kind of. Because uh, before that, literally hadn't seen you probably three, four years back. It was back in Texas. We actually had uh, lunch at, at the junction. Yeah. Um, I was still going to school in, in Oklahoma, I want to say. I think so. Yeah, so um, it was during during the summer. It's like sophomore year, sophomore, junior year college, maybe. Yeah, lo good, good. But a good, good while ago. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. But, you know, that's what that's how I know you're good friends because we can just pick up, not literally, not talk. I mean, I'm sure we've texted a few times, but not any oh, yeah, real conversations. Uh, and then we just pick up right where we left off. I love that. I love having friends I can do that with. I only have, you know, probably five or six, maybe, you know, a handful or two of those type of friends. And I'd get, uh, I promise you this, I appreciate the hell out of each and every one of them. So, yeah, man. Back um, at you, dude. No doubt, man. It's awesome. So, how is the real estate business out here in this fine state of Colorado? It's pretty good. Um, I, from what I know of the real estate market in Colorado, Denver, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like Manhattan, you know, you're paying a ton of money for not a whole lot of house or apartment okay. or whatever it is. But luckily out here on the Western slope and in, in this little, um, small, you know, quiet place such as Grand Junction, the market is kind of similar to Texas. Uh, but business is good. We're staying busy. Uh, people are buying houses out here and stuff. And yeah, it's a great little area. So give people a little rundown. How far, so we are on the Western part of the, Colorado. Yeah. How far, how close are we are to you? We're very close to Utah, right? We are actually probably right now we're sitting, um, the two of us, straight line distance, about 20 miles from the Utah state line. Okay, so very, very close to Utah. Far western slope. We are located centrally north to south somewhat in, in Colorado. Um, okay. About two hours north of the San Juan Mountains, uh, Ure, Telluride area. Um, that's kind of a popular tourist area in Colorado. 
Um, we are uh, golly, about four hours across the mountains from Denver um, and then headed out to the west. We're about four hours from Salt Lake City. So uh, at the biggest town in between both of those. So um, I don't know. So it, this is kind of like Texarkana. Because uh, Texas County is like the biggest thing between Dallas, Little Rock, a lot of people stop Somewhat, and crash yes, there. absolutely. Because and an interstate also runs through Grand Junction, mm -hmm. just as uh, yeah, Texas County. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Except uh, no, no mountains in Texas County. Yeah, no, this uh, beats the socks off the views. Out oh there. yeah, hands down, hands down. Don't get me wrong. No offense to you know, we love our, there. we love where we're from. That's where I'm from. Yeah, but we're glad that we're um, able to get out and move about. You know, me and you so have blessed. Very very similar mindsets. I like to think. You know what I mean? As far as like. Well, why is what's stopping me from just moving to Colorado? What's stopping me from just moving to California? You know, you, uh, the answer to that question is we, us, we were the only ones stopping ourselves for whatever reasons, whatever we told ourselves in our mind, and you know, whatever um, kind of excuses we could come up with. That's the only thing that really stops us. So, um, that's 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 true for everybody. We only stop ourselves. So let me ask you this question. Go for it. How do you? define success I think we're all kind of on a mission to be successful quote unquote but I think uh, I think if we all abide by a universal term uh, or definition of success I think we're setting a lot of people up for failure so my uh, mission with this podcast is kind of get people to answer that question for themselves so Logan I ask you how do you define success um well, like a successful life or just in like the word success in general? Well, um, yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, you can take it wherever you want. Context, we can go life and then we can go uh, work. Sure. Or we can go work, life, uh, pleasure, balance, you know, whatever you want to take that. I mean, I think in general, uh, a success is w w if when you have a success, um, you have set a goal and you've accomplished it. So, you know, if I, for example, um, look at the weather and I find a mountain that I go want to climb and I say, okay, I want to attempt to climb that 14,000 foot peak and I get to the top of it and I come back down safely, then I think, you know, that's, that's in successful. very literal terms, yeah. I was successful at, for at, sure. at that for goal sure. that I set for myself. So, you know, you can just scale that from there. So, you know, I think a successful uh, life would be, you know, for me, myself, you know, I've set a couple personal goals. You know, I'd like to own a house here in Grand Junction. Um, I'd like to um, spend, you know, 100 days, at least 100 days a year outside. Uh, that's a. That's know, a third, almost. Kind of a, a what? Uh, that's third, almost a third, third yeah, of the year. Right. It's. I mean, if you spend every weekend but two, outside for Saturday and Sunday camping, paddling, hiking, canoeing. Yeah, heck yeah. Skiing. So the bigger picture, I guess, the bigger picture of success is what. Um, this is kind of where I want to go next. Like how, at the end of your life, um, how are you going to define success? Do you consider what what are some things that you want to accomplish other than the house and and you know being outside and those kind of things? What do you want to be able to look back on and and say about your life or reminisce about your life at the end of uh, your time? Uh, I really just want to leave the world a better place than I found it. You know, uh, whether that be um, physically, like uh, say planting trees, planting flowers, restoring uh, old rundown farmland to. Um, a functioning uh, healthy ecosystem again um that's what i went to school to do and i you know i kind of still have interest in doing that in things in the environmental field but sure. um uh i don't know i guess uh i don't have any kids of my own or anything like that uh, but i've got a little nephew and a, and a niece you know i'd love to you know show them um that anything that they want to do they can come out and do it uh you know doesn't matter how big or small you are you know i'm a little guy and i'm climbing really big mountains so um, yeah, maybe kicking my an butt too. Inspiration to some other people, uh, and really just to to enjoy um, every minute of every single day. If you're not enjoying where you're living or what you're doing job wise, um, that's really taxing uh, on the on the body mentally and physically, and you know can shorten your lifespan. So I think happiness has a lot to do with it as well. So if I can I look back at the end and say that I was happy for a good bit of my time, and and that I, uh, you know, inspired a couple of people, and and maybe. Uh, did a couple of things to to help some other people out um then yeah I, I think that would for me it would be a successful life well that's sure a beautiful segue for me because my next question is how do you define happiness um i don't know uh, for me before it's funny before i moved out here i had a thought that um it, well, first of all living in victoria texas it's real close to the coast it's very flat. There are no, you know, hills, mountains, anything like that. There are hiking trails along the river, like Guadalupe River runs through there. But, and you know, I, I kayaked it a couple of times. But um, I, I took a trip 
um, in September of 2015 to West Texas and climbed Guadalupe Peak by myself. And that was my first real experience solo um, climbing a mountain, doing some serious hiking with some serious elevation change and some views. And uh, ever since I've done that, um, well, first of all, doing that on a weekend after working, you know, a couple of straight weeks waiting tables was just the biggest uh, stress reliever, just getting away from people, especially, you know, waiting tables, you're forced to talk to people all day long and, and they ask you questions and you bring them. It's, it can be annoying after a long time. So yeah. getting out away from everybody and into the public land, um, where there's not a lot of people and there's no crowds and there's no noise, um, that made me very, very happy. So I had a thought if I, even if I had a, a job as you know miserable as waiting tables, if I could live in a place that allowed me to do things like we're doing right now or like that I did in West Texas on a weekly basis uh, to have a regular stress relief and somewhere to go to unwind, then I thought, you know, maybe I'll be happy then because I was kind of miserable down in, in, in South Texas. Um, and, you know, and I came out here and I started hiking as often as I could uh, daily at first and at least, you know, a, once a week, um, more often than not, two, three times a week. And, uh, I found that when I went back to work in the office every single day, even though my job was kind of monotonous, I didn't mind it as it wasn't as, um, I don't know. I didn't mind it as much because I knew that I could leave the office and within 15 minutes be in a place like this. Yeah. And, heck yeah. Um, I mean, that's awesome. And that's exactly why I moved out to Southern California. I was like, I'm going to go out there see what it's like. And worst comes to worst. Like I get a shitty job. I don't like, I hate it, but there's mountains to escape to. There's beaches to escape to. And that's ultimately why I, that draws me to Southern California. I love it out there. I think I'll definitely be back. I think I've found kind of my grand junction, sure. if you will. I know you really like this area. I, I love it too, um, but it's a little too far away from the beaches for me. Uh, the beach is, is a really big um, kind of place where I go to unwind and kind of clear my head. But, you know, sometimes you got to leave places like that, uh, visit other areas, then go back so you can appreciate them more. You know, I know I do that when I go back home. Um, you know, I would probably never live there again, but, uh, you know, there's different, different things I appreciate when I do go back. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, that's, there's a, I posted a quote a while back. It was like, you know, when you leave places and then you come back, you come back with a new set of eyes because you've experienced so many other things. So your perception, you're a different person the next time you go back a hundred percent. Yeah. So I think it's cool to do that. And I think I'll continue to, you know, travel and see and do different things. Cause I'm like you, man. Um, I love talking to people and I do it all day, almost every day. And, uh, it's great, but you, you do need to get away and kind of find that peace, kind of find that serenity and find that open space. And ultimately that's kind of why I came out to Colorado. I'm actually probably going to stay out here for, you know, probably a month, two months or so. Um, I got a couple book projects, but I wanted to get away from the big city of uh, LA and you know, that area and just kind of get out here and, and really regain my focus on those projects. So that's kind of what brought me out here. But, um, I'm pretty glad. Thanks for, uh, hosting me. Man. Yeah, man. It's a, uh, it's awesome to have you. I've, don't get many visitors up here. It's just work, 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 and, and hiking. hiking by myself. Yeah, uh, hiking so. by yourself. That's crazy. It's actually it's a great life, even though nobody's coming to visit me. You know, I don't really know, know that many people in town. I, you know, if I was somewhere where I couldn't come out and see things like this and do things like this, I'd probably be very lonely and miserable. But sure. uh, this, I'm I'm loving being um, in my mid twenties and living in a place like this. Uh, and still having uh, functioning legs and yeah, uh, heck yeah. You know, and everything. So. Yeah, that's legit. Uh, well, you know, the third question I typically ask people, I think you've already answered it though, is uh, what do you want? Like, what do you want out of this life? And I think you answered it and it's probably, I mean, it's a great answer. I think everybody can relate to it because, um, you know, you set yourself up for success, set yourself up for uh, for happiness by uh, moving out here. You didn't know anybody out here. You know what I mean? We've yeah, done that before. It was a big risk. Um, Huge risk. You I didn't even know if here. I would like the job, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, yeah, or any of that. So. But you had something that you knew you would like, the mountains, right? Guaranteed. You knew that. Guaranteed. So you knew going into it, you had at least something. So I think that's a good takeaway from that story that other people can listen that listen to can take away from is that they had that you had something that you knew you liked. When I went to California, I knew there was mountains. I knew there was beaches. There was something there that I liked. So while it was a huge leap, while um, you know, there was a lot of unknowns and a lot of things that could you know may have not gone your way, there was definitely one thing that you had a stronghold with. So I would tell that to people. Um, if you're looking to make a change, make sure that there's something there that you're going to like, no matter what. And really just in general, you should have the things that you can do on a regular basis that really bring you uh, peace and, and, and happiness. And, uh, 
you know, everybody's got different things. Not everybody says hiking and climbing mountains. Some people like to knit sweaters or, you know, uh, exactly. I don't, whatever, you know, pick your poison. But uh, it's, I think it's crucial um, just for uh, everybody to have something that you can look forward to at the end of the day or at the, for the weekend or, um, you know, because life's rough and not everything goes your way. But if you've got something you can, you know, at least come to that. Uh, yeah, and not every day is going to be just like super awesome. You know what I mean? No matter what you do, no matter how much you love your job or, you know, um, love where you're at, there's going to be days where it's not ideal. So just prepare for that. Be ready for that. Just because you do what you love every day doesn't mean there's parts of it that uh, you don't necessarily care for. So that's just sure. that's just part of the whole whole experience here. Is there anything about Jan- Grand Junction that you don't like? Wow. Um it's pretty expensive to fly out of this airport. So okay. it's a little yeah. regional airport, so you got to take a hopper flight to either Denver or Phoenix or something like that. Um, let's see. The weather's pretty nice. Yeah, so I didn't realize that. So obviously it's, Southern California is known for its weather. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful all the time and a little, very little rain. And then I, I got here, I thought there would be a little bit more rain, but you were saying that you guys don't get a this, whole lot we're, of rain. Ba- we're in a desert out here. It's, I think, I want to say less than like 19 inches of rain fall a year. It's, okay. uh, and that's including snow as well, but it's, oh, wow. um, it's pretty dry. We only really get uh, rains in the summer monsoons, which we're kind of at the end of that season right now. Um, but yeah, the climate's very agreeable. It's not humid at all, like what we came from in, in Texas, um, especially what I immediately came from being so close to the coast. That was a nice thing um so what you're saying there's is really I, I i haven't found either i have either there's no downside to this town or i've done a really good job at looking at the positive yeah well i think it's probably you know a little bit of both it's a great little city um i keep busy with only doing things that make me happy like kayaking and hiking and things like that i really don't have time for uh you know, negative to think yeah. about anything negative you know exactly uh, and that's awesome i mean that's commendable i think uh, a lot of people should adopt that type of mindset because a lot of people are so quick to focus on the negative side of things than rather than the positive you know what i mean so what one thing i've learned is that when bad things happen to people you know uh, some people tend to take it personally like why is the universe doing this to me but if you think about it in a way that it's like a numbers game you know bad stuff happens all the time most of the time it's not happening to you and you know let's say you get in a car wreck and you know okay yeah that that's gonna happen to somebody it was just your uh you were that statistic that time you know like just yeah. don't take things personally and take things as well, they come just roll with the be be like water off a duck's back just exactly and there's a quote i read a while back it's life doesn't happen to you right life happens for you right. so if you can adapt that mindset that everything is happening because for your benefit that you can't you can't lose like you're gonna win like nobody can beat you if you adopt that mindset and while hard while it you know you're still gonna battle through some tough things um you know just coming into it with that type of mindset is going to help out tremendously i feel yeah, like you have to nice nice um well what time is it let's check because we're 7 30 okay it's 7 30 have mountain time we have about 35 minutes till sunset 35 minutes till sunset we got a nice little are, golden hour going on right now yeah uh, golden hour it's awesome i wish you guys could experience this so go check out the video for sure you'll get a little glimpse of it but um, I'm, I got a video I'm going to put together with it too, but I, on the video I was talking about how, you know, just the metaphor of the mountain, right? How it's very, um, you know, symbolic of life, you know, and, and, and symbolic of achieving things. Anything worthwhile is kind of tough. You got to climb a mountain. There's going to be um, some different things you got to go through, get through. There's going to be maybe some slips and falls. There's going to be some uh, level planes. There's going to be some real steep planes, you know. So it's just so metaphorical, but, you know, the, the climb, it, it's always... Oh well, the view is always worth the climb. I screw up my own uh, thing. I do that a lot. Yeah, it's I'm not right. perfect. I'm just I'm not perfect. Relentless doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you just do it again. You know you don't give up. You don't quit. But yeah, seriously though, the view is always worth the climb. So that's metaphorical to me. Um, and this is actually like my first uh, time like climbing like a real real mountain since uh, I was last in Colorado. And we all know what happened last time I was in Colorado. And if you're not, go check out that article on my website. I believe it's entitled Testing My Fearlessness. Um, I've actually got some video content I'm about to put out from that time uh, over uh, about a year ago. So on the year anniversary, which will be uh, late October, um, you'll have some footage of that, of that um, fateful day. 
So I'm excited. We'll about make sure that. that doesn't happen this weekend on the mountain. We shall try. We shall try. Yeah. So I was going to say that earlier. I was like, all right, cool. We're going to do a 14 or this weekend. Yeah. Um, if I happen to not make it, you got to make sure this podcast goes out. You, yeah. Show me how to upload it. I'll take it's, care of it. It's now. wicked easy. But uh, yeah, if you guys don't hear from me, I put a little RIP thing at the end and all that. RIP. Yeah. Just make sure all the content gets out. Like I have a lot of videos <laughs> that are on my external that I, you know, haven't put out yet. So. Um, yeah, just put it all out there. Let everybody know what's up. You got so, it. Um, it'd be kind of my last hoorah. But I think we'll be okay. Logan's be done this before. I'm a rookie. It's going to be my first 14 er I hope I can make it up there. Um, I'm pretty confident, and I'm very hard-headed, and I'm relentless. So See, and that's all really all it takes to get up a mountain. You just There are so many reasons to turn around and go back down, but there's really only one to keep going. You know? yeah. And as, like long, as, like as long as that's your biggest uh, drive you and you keep putting one foot in front of the other, eventually you'll get to the top. 100%. That goes for every endeavor in life, too. And the only way I'm not going to get up to the top, well, two reasons, I guess. If the weather not cooperate, you right. know, we got to get down. Sometimes. Sometimes you know, that happens. You know, that's, you know. External forces at right play. Yeah, exactly. Live to climb a mountain another day. You know what I mean? There's no sense in doing something stupid. Um, we take calculated risk. It is a risk climbing the mountain, but there's no sense trying to fight weather. Absolutely. Um, the only other reason I wouldn't get up there is if I pass out. You have to drag me off the mountain. So. Or like, you know, we can get him by mountain lions or that could happen too so uh, um you know i didn't say the view wasn't uh, risky it's worth it but there's risk and that's what makes i think the view so good is sometimes if it's a little bit more risky than if we drove up here honestly i would still enjoy the view but i wouldn't have that sense of fulfillment absolutely it's so yeah it's kind of like when people get handed like success or get handed you know money handed a lot of things like they don't appreciate it as much as if they actually would have, you know, earned it or did something to to deserve it. We earned every bit of this view, for sure. With yeah, I got two equity. blisters on my feet, so yeah, yeah. earned this one. Some uh, breaking in these boots. Some sore quads and glutes. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Um, do you think I should hit the? I was going to do an upper body day tomorrow morning. Think that's a good idea before the 14er, or should I just forego it? Probably doesn't matter. Cool. It's upper body. So doing this hike today was was good. Get your legs loose. Get your yeah. breathing at at the yeah. So we're at altitude. So Grand Junction sits around five thousand feet. I can tell you how high we are right now. So I'm coming straight from freaking sea level, and uh, now I'm in Grand Junction. So I'm gonna be consistently at five thousand feet. We're currently at five thousand eight hundred and seventy three feet above sea level. Nice. Nice. So we climbed about a thousand feet elevation. I guess is right. what you said is what this hike was, and a so, little under two miles. So a little under two miles. Somewhat strenuous of a gain. It's the, it was the last mile that was the the steep part. So. For sure, yeah. The last mile was pretty rough, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. You know, I think I was a little winded a couple of times just because I'm coming from sea level. Right. So um, that's kind of a big jump there that people don't realize. So that's the biggest hurdle with the 14ers is the uh, the elevation. So yeah. So what's going to really help is we're going to drive out tomorrow Friday afternoon, and uh, the trailhead will probably sit around nine to ten thousand feet. And so we're just going to get there. We're not going to be reactive, but we're going to sleep there. And sleeping up that higher uh, for a night is going to help you adjust, and then when we wake up, you'll be a little bit more acclimated. Um, but yeah, we're going to take it slow, and you know, just because uh, yeah, altitude sickness is a very real thing, and yeah. especially coming straight from uh, sea level, literally. Southern California. Um, literally, zero, it's going to be real I mean. impressive for uh, to to go from yeah. Yeah, less than a week. I got out here on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. So I drove all night, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. And got here yesterday afternoon, so yeah, less than a week. So we're gonna test it out, but that you know that's how I like to do things. Um, I you know yesterday I came out here, you know, kind of uh, notorious for not being as prepared as uh, as I needed to be. That's exactly what happened. Why what happened on St. Mary's Glacier happened? Right. Not as prepared as I should have been, um, but nonetheless, um, got my, I got boots on today. Um, so I was trying to break those in, and uh, you know we we'll, we may stop by Cabela's later tonight and pick up some things if. Uh, I need something so yeah we're gonna do it right to um, be prepared this time prepare for more uh to hear more from logan as uh, i'm gonna be here for quite a while i got an awesome some book projects coming up i've got a new book i'm releasing i'm not sure if i want to tell you just yet or not but I, i'm really excited about that two other projects in the works me and chad mccrary are, are back on that so hopefully to get uh wrap that project up here pretty soon and there's another one um that that'll be coming out shortly. That I'll uh, just wait to tell you on on that until we lock down some some deets. But until then, we're coming to you from Grand Junction, Colorado, on this beautiful August afternoon, watching the sunset over over the town of Grand Junction up on Liberty Cap. Logan, any final thoughts? Uh, man, it's just a just a 
lovely is the word that comes to mind evening out here right now it's just so pleasant uh yeah just uh in the podcast on a good note good mood good sunset we're watching the evening sun light up the book cliffs and the grand mesa probably gonna be hiking down probably right at sunset might stay up here and watch the shadows climb up the mountains that's always fun i I do that occasionally nothing wrong with that i can get on board with that but guys thank you so much for listening be sure to follow logan he is on instagram he is not on facebook uh what where can people find you on instagram it's uh, at logan c jackson logan c jackson give him a follow he posts a lot of pictures of his hikes and cool stuff like that so be sure to go give show him some love on that prepare to hear more from logan and me in the next month or so and uh, you guys stay relentless stay classy i'll see you goons on tuesday have a great weekend